joining us on the phone, another we had Bill Conley in for an entire hour last hour, uh, which was nice because helped me talk a little bit about football um, while Stan's away. Uh, now Jeff Logan, another part of our best Buckeye coverage team here on 105.7 The Zone, joins us. Jeff, um, are you tired of this whole thing? <laughs> uh, yeah, it, it feels like it's been a couple of months that this has been going on, and Matt, I was thinking about it a little bit this morning, and uh, you hear all these rumors about a two-game suspension or this, that, or the other. Don't you think this team and this coach have been suspended and punished enough um, for what they've had to go through for the last couple of weeks in terms of uh, the uncertainty and uh, not being able to be hands-on with your football team? And I just think the impact of uh, Urban Meyer not being a part of this program for the uh, first uh, 10 days or whatever it's been of training camp has been, uh, I, I think there'll be an impact in the uh, 2018 season. Okay, when you were on a committee, now yours is much different than this. This is an investigation trying to figure out what was done, was uh, were the proper things done, this and that. But nonetheless, um, your situation, you were hiring a coach, Jim Trussell at the time. I'm just wondering time frame like you just said it feels like let, let's get on with this um I, i've said that too do they do you think they are feeling any pressure we got to get this done I, i'm trying to get into the mind of them because a lot of people say boy friday news dump yeah you, we got to get it out by then do they even do you even think like that when you're on a committee or is it complete blinders you don't even know what day of the week it is well the i can tell you that the the pr professionals uh that have been hired to be uh, but, you know, part of this entire process beyond the committee, beyond all the lawyers and everything else, that's something they worry about. But from a committee standpoint, no, uh, they want to get it right. And, uh, you know, the, the uh, my initial thought was the longer it goes, the, the better it is in terms of uh, uh, for Urban Meyer. Then I start thinking about the longer it goes, what in the hell are they finding? You know, what is what's coming up? And, you know, and I don't, I don't know care who you are individually or who you are as an organization, as a company, as a university, um, as a football coach anywhere, you know, if, if you had to open your entire life, your entire books, your phone, your email, your text messages, your social media, all of that stuff open to somebody for a couple of weeks, and then they brought in people uh, that they think – knew you well enough that you would have an opinion about things, you know, they're going to find all kinds of stuff that you wouldn't be proud of, but you're not really worried about stuff. That's a fireable offense. If you follow me, yeah, um, yep, yep. I think, I think, I, I think every one of us, I don't care how pure or how perfect you think you are. Uh, if you had to, you know, turn everything over and somebody had two weeks to concentrate just on your garbage. Mm -hmm. Are they going to be able to find something that stinks? You know, Urban. And you, it, and yeah, go ahead. No, please. Oh, I, <laughs> I was just going to say, Jeff, you know, Urban, and you've spent time with him. Assuming that, and I do assume that he's following this um, administrative leave to a T and, you know, staying away from campus and not having contact with anybody as competitive as he is. I just am trying to imagine what he's doing with himself and how difficult <laughs> this may be. How, how do you imagine urban Meyer handling this right now? Is he in the I backyard barbecue barbecuing or, <laughs> you know, what is no, he doing? I, I, you know, I don't think he's in the backyard barbecuing or cleaning his pool because I think if that were the case, the number of, people that play golf in your field would probably be reporting that they saw urban Meyer out, you know, <laughs> working right. on a suntan or something, but yes. you know, that, that, is, that is not the case. And, and uh, you know, my goodness, I, I, I mentioned this uh, on an interview with Clay Hall uh, last week that uh, a guy that goes 9,000 miles an hour, 24 seven, I mean, and that's what a head football coach does. And I know, how 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 urban is is stretched in terms of his commitments and his time, the things that he says yes to, the things that he has to say no to, um, and then to go to a complete utter dead stop. You know, this is not like when he quit at Florida and he was doing some broadcasting at ESPN and that sort of thing. This is a dead hard stop where you are 
you're, you're under house arrest for yeah. lack of a better explanation. Really? Yep. yep. And and I can promise you that, you know, the, the the floors can only be cleaned so many times. The you can only listen to your lawyers, your PR people, or whatever the case is, uh, so much. Um, the the pent up frustration in that man at this stage has got to be unbelievable. Okay, uh, let me give you the uh, scenario. Um, this, whether it's this week or beginning of next week, it gets done, it gets announced, and it's, you know, a suspension or he's back. Uh, he's not fired. Um, having been away, how do you Im- how does he get caught up, Jeff? How, you know, he's he's been away from half of training camp. Saturday they have their second scrimmage. Does he have to take a, almost a step back and allow his – assistant coaches who have been there kind of make some decisions leading up to the season that he would normally wait, make. How, how does he get caught up to be Urban Meyer, the head coach again? Well, let's, let's assume that Urban Meyer during this administrative leave process um, has not, has not had any access to, you know, film and video and stuff with respect to practice as he's, you know, required to do administrative leave. You cannot be in the building. You cannot talk to the people. You cannot do all of this stuff. You're, you're dead stop. So if, if that in fact is the case, and I don't doubt that it is, um, then I think what Urban Meyer does is he goes for 72 hours. And this is me, uh, my guess, uh, goes for 72 hours after the welcome of the team, and can you imagine what the emotion of that team is going to be like if and when that man walks in that door? Yep. I mean, that, that to me is a religious moment. I mean, it, it's going to be remembered forever if, in fact, it happens, okay, in that direction. But then I think Urban takes 72 hours to get caught up um, in terms of observing doing film, doing tape, doing meetings, doing whatever he's got to do. But keep in mind that all of the the planning and preparation for uh, camp and all these scrimmages and everything else, those have all been in play now for the last 90 days or or, uh, four months. I mean, they've they've known exactly what they're going to do, what their meals are going to be, you know, what time, when the buses are coming, all that stuff is in place. All they had to do is go. Uh, but Urban's going to take some time to get caught up if and when he gets the opportunity to coach his football team again. Yeah, it's uh, that's going to be fascinating. And you know, if he's not suspended and he coaches game number one, I just wonder if he, you know, <laughs> his game day responsibilities if he changes them at all just because he's been away so long. But you know, maybe in seventy two hours you can get yourself uh, caught up yeah. that much. You know, um, it's, well, it, you know. The, there have been situations, Matt, and not specifically like this one, but if you know if Urban's got to sit for a game or two, um, there have been head coaches that have had medical problems. Uh, think of the coach up at uh, Minnesota that yep. uh, had some health issues, and all of a sudden they had to make adjustments to what they're doing. You know, with with the maturity that Urban Meyer has on this staff, with Kevin Wilson, uh, with Ciano, with Jay doing what they're uh, they're doing in the practices right now, it's not that you don't need a head coach um you need leadership it starts from the very top but the um the 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 immense amount of leadership on this football team uh with the talent that he has now from a coaching standpoint i think is going to make whatever this transition is going to be whether it's no games some games or all the games however it comes out um i think ohio state will survive it but I, i still think a guy as big as urban meyer is as far as a presence on his football team uh, would be impactful. You know, if, if we'd have lost Woody Hayes, if the team would have lost Earl Bruce, if the team would have lost Jim Trestle, if the team would have lost John Cooper, would there be an impact on that? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Um, who's more Who's more impactful of all those football coaches? I think you could have a hours-long debate about, you know, which of the guys that, you know, actually coach. And Woody Hayes did very little X's and O's coaching but he was the he was the, the 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 inspiration and the fiber for the way everybody you know practiced and played. Uh, but the coaches were you know the assistant coaches were left up with the responsibility of getting the plays in, getting the X's and O's, and that sort of thing. Last thing for former Buckeye running back and uh, one of our best Buckeye coverage analysts here on 105.7 The Zone, uh, Jeff Logan. All right, Stan and I the other day had a, a little bit of a debate about this. If it went the other way. Uh, and Coach Meyer gets let go. Stan was like, you know what? 
I, I really think that that could, for a season, even with a inexperienced head coach, interim head coach, Ryan Day, galvanize the football team and you know they catch fire and could even be better than we thought. I'm kind of like what you were talking about. That is such a big figure to lose. Yeah. I, I can't imagine it wouldn't affect them negatively. Um, which well, way do you think it would be a negative effect, or do you see where stands coming from that all of a sudden this this team could rally around what happened and have a sensational year? Well, I think I, I think the initial emotions would be to rally around him, but I want you to think back: how well did we rally behind Luke Fickle? Mm-hmm. wasn't very I, good. I would and, say this: the difference there is Luke was losing players. Luke, Luke you know. There were guys getting, you know, he lost Devere Posey for 10 games. He lost, uh, Jordan Hall was getting, he had guys getting suspended. In this case, you would, you still got the guys. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you're not losing personnel because they're getting pulled out for NCAA violations. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, and I, under, I, I understand the impact of losing players, but you can lose players emotionally too. And I think in, in that season, it wasn't only the injuries or the suspensions or whatever it might be. It was also some of the kids checking out yeah. and uh, maybe maybe not being as committed. So I, I could see it. My, my point is I could see it go either way. I think initially it would be a rallying point um, if you had a loss early on in the season. Uh, I think a lot of that emotion goes away. So, yeah. um, it, it, Matt, Matt, it would be very difficult um and especially if ohio state which they would probably do put the quote unquote interim tag on somebody then i think you've done absolutely nothing if if, if they feel like they've got somebody there that can be their football coach for the future if, if urban meyer is not going to be the guy then, then then at least stand up pull your pull your pants up your big boy pants up and name that freaking head coach and let's go i mean let's let's move on if there's something out there that is so bad that Urban Meyer is not going to be our football coach, I don't think that's the direction we're going. Um, but if it were, don't give me this interim stuff. Get on with it. We've got talented football coaches there. Name one of those guys as your head football coach and move forward. Jeff, always a pleasure. And uh, it will be more of a pleasure when we're talking about football uh, and, no and, hey, hey, and not this stuff. Matt, Matt I, I, I want to add one thing. I was listening with you and, and Bill earlier. Yes. And I thought you had, a, you had a great question in terms of how do you keep those running backs happy when yes. there's only so many carries to go around and we've got a healthy Mike Weber and you got J.K. Dobbins who's on all these watch lists. The one thing that I think will be a balance and, I, and that I didn't hear you guys talk about is the, is the fact that this offense, the little we know about it because there's no media coverage, but this offense – will most likely be a lot different than a J.T. Barrett run offense. And last year, J.T. Barrett had 165 rushes. Now, all of those, not all of them are going to go away, but the vast majority of those are going to go away and be spread among running backs. That's so a great point. There are, going, there are going to be more apples falling from the tree for those running backs to be able to have uh, uh, touches and to feel like they're part of the program. Uh, J.K. Dobbins carried it 195 times last year. Mike Weber just over 100 times. So I think there's another, you know, 40, 50, 60 touches per season that each one of these guys is going to have an opportunity. Yeah, they'll still be doing the zone read, but less of it and more just straight handoffs. So you're right. Absolutely. I, I mean, the, 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 yep. The, they'll, the running backs will have more chances. Great point, Jeff. Yep. Matt, you're doing a great job. Enjoy listening to you.